What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Life of Cletus is here. And in today's episode, it's our first time ever for our podcast. The podcast name is Toy Wars. I'm going to have a guest on. Hopefully he's a regular guest for me, a regular partner in this. Um, his name is Marvel at My Toys. He's an awesome dude. I found his channel when I was watching or viewing podcast uh, videos on YouTube for Mezco's or Hot Toys. He came up. His channel used to be named Timely Treasures. You might know him from there. He does a lot of 112 scale stuff review wise. And as soon as I heard his voice, I then knew who he was because his name recently changed. I was watching all of his reviews back maybe about three months ago. I was just watching them all. I just watched them all up. Um, so we're going to get into it. We're going to talk to him about 10 minutes, and then we're going to go and check out all the news that's coming out for this week. He's going to be a regular on the podcast. Hope you guys enjoy it. This whole episode, everything's going to be called Toy Wars. This is the series. Hope you guys enjoy it. It's going to be pretty fun. Get my thoughts, get it all broken down to the channel. We can hear in other collectors uh, as well what they what, what they want to think of and, and add it on to their take on toys and collectibles. Um, this guy, he collects the same stuff I collect, and I, I'm, I'm pumped and excited to bring him on. His name is Marvel at My Toys. It's up to him if he wants to share his real name. I don't care. It's all up to him. So here he is, Marvel at My Toys. Welcome aboard, baby. This is what up, this is it, baby. This is it. Um, I found this gentleman again just about a couple of days ago. He was saying in his podcast how he wanted to do something. Well, actually, I'll put it this way: he did a podcast by himself for hour long, podcast by himself daily. Well, not daily, but maybe weekly, 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 weekly. Yeah, weekly. weekly. And he throw one and two in there as well. If something dropped, and he was doing it by himself. And I'm sitting there like, man, this guy got some balls, bro. He's doing it by himself. I know me personally, I wanted to do it, but I just didn't think if I did it by myself, it wouldn't be, you know, it's not, it's just not there doing it by yourself. And if you watch one of his recent videos, he explains it in there, how it's just like, ah, uh, it's just missing something. And it just... Okay, it's tough talking for an hour and thinking people are going to be interested all the time you know you got to put videos up there ah it's tough it's tough so we're going to get into it um the first 10 minutes or so is going to be about him it's all going to be talking about him talking about his collection how he got started what he started first with i knew he was a big comic book guy so let's go let me bring up some uh footage for him i'm going to use stream yards i'm going to do it my version of doing it i stole I'm not paying for StreamYard yet, so we got that little picture in there. This could be some of his collection stuff. We're going to talk about it right now. So first off, um, obviously you're probably a collector your entire life, right? Yep. Started when I was a kid with uh, the original Playmates Ninja Turtles. Absolutely. I remember used to getting a few of those, some Bucky O'Hares. Um, and then you stopped collecting probably on your way growing up, yay and nay? Yeah, I stopped collecting action figures. I got more into... Uh wrestling figures and comic books mm. uh, and then collected comic books through college and then recently got back into toys like about four or five years ago yeah i think a lot of us got into that about like the good people like the good collectors got into about four or five years ago if you got in within like the last one or two years ah, i'm sorry because you missed out on getting this stuff at pretty good prices and now you have to pay that extra price uh market on there so um when did you start your YouTube channel on here My YouTube channel actually started uh, Halloween day of 2018 so it's been a little over a year Okay, and you got how many subscribers around 3,000 right like right around 3,000 yeah 3,050 something like that That's pretty cool. What made you? Uh, do your do your channel Man, I, I was talking to my wife about toys. I was talking to my friends about toys and no one wants to talk about toys so I was like, I'm going to share this with somebody who might care. And I just figured I'd do a video. So I was watching channels like Cincy Nerd and Josh Pence and Michael Mercy. And they just looked like they were having a good time sharing their collection and sharing the hobby. So I figured I would just jump in on that. So my first collection tour video came out uh, Halloween night 2018. And from there, I just started 
thinking about ways I could share my hobby with the community and making toy histories, doing collection tours and reviews. At this point, I just uh, it's kind of like a, a little hobby that I really enjoy and my channel is a little side project. So it's been a good adventure and obviously you know when you start doing YouTube, man, you learn so much so fast that it becomes a whole nother part of your life. Absolutely. Uh, and it's, it's not something that just opens over the night. It's literally trial and error every single time, every single time. And then yep. for me, every year, I try to change it every single year. Like they say, oh, once you get to 10,000 subscribers, just rinse and repeat that over, over and over and over again. And you're good. I sh maybe I should listen. Maybe I don't know. Every year I try to switch it up, and every year I get into something a little bit different from from when I started from buying Funko Pops to buying Grails and to buying uh, just exclusives. Maybe one year to doing now selling Funko Pops, and then all of a sudden buying into Hot Toys. So every year I've been kind of different. Uh, this year's been for me some uh, comic books, Omnibus, um, the Teenage Mutant Turtle series as well. And pick up some Marvel Legends. So, uh, are, are you looking to do anything different this year? Do you have a mindset like that? I want to get into more, uh, like, the creators behind the stuff that we love. So, I want to do more, like, comic book creators. Like, maybe a, a documentary style on, like, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. Some of those real famous artists like Todd McFarlane and, and Rob Liefeld. Um, and maybe take it not just toys, but the people that actually create the characters behind the toys that we love. Uh, it's a, such a smart idea because I'm kind of on that same page. I own all this crazy stuff. I've never seen a Star Wars film until I bought every single Funko Pop. I bought every single Funko Pop. There was like uh, 200 at the time, whatever it was. I bought them all, and then the girlfriend's like, let's watch Star Wars. I'm like, all right. I go buy all the Marvel Funko Pops, all the expensive-ass ones, and go, she's like, I'm like, I want to watch the Marvel films. Like, all right, <laughs> all right. So uh, that's how I started. Um, same thing with 99% of my stuff. I know know how many collection reviews I've done when people just bash on me on getting everybody's name wrong, especially in Star Wars. <laughs> I'm like, oh, listen, this is how it is. I'm not going to deny it. This is how it is. So that's why I'm now getting into not just this. I bought a bunch of Omnibus for the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man. I got a bunch on... Um, Pre-order, I think for me, the best way is to buy the Omnibus, especially if you can get them on sale. Because I just can't, um, I can't afford to buy the real ones, and I don't want to have a digital copy. So, Yeah, digital copies are, that's kind of whack. A comic book is about that feel of flipping the pages and checking out that cool art, you know? Yeah, I'm like, like this book, for instance, I got this. I'm almost done with it. It's the first uh, TMT uh, IDW collection. Once I'm done with it, I'm buying me a new one. I'm putting this bag in the box, and I'm gonna keep the new one on the shelf. I'm like, oh, look how fresh it is, you know. So you got, you know, you know, you gotta be a collector. And they got these for like 30, 30 bucks right now. They they're usually fifty dollars. So it's great that all these comic books or these omnibuses. Uh, I know the Wolverine one coming out was at a hundred bucks. It's down to sixty bucks. I already got it on pre-order. I'm excited for that. They got the Silver Surfer and they got a Carnage. I'm really excited to, to learn more about Carnage. Your name is Cletus Cassidy, so I can finally have a, a hero that I'm about. Now, let's move on to uh, talking about your collection. You got a collection room, right? Yeah, man. I'm in it right now. This is uh, something amazing because when I was just going to grab all these photos out of there, there's so much detail to your collection. There's you know, I'm just looking through it, and I'm like, oh, look, there's there's a figure right there. Oh, that guy's displayed there. But that one's in the box. Those are out of the box. And it looks very unique and has great variety to it. Uh, you want to explain? I appreciate that. How, did that, like, you just, is it, you had it set up, and all of a sudden you got a couple new figures, and you just wanted to just, like, ah, this will go here? Or uh, what was the thought process on that? Yeah, to be honest, it started, if you go back and look at that first video, the very first video on my channel, you can see just how much the collection room changes on like a month to month basis because I've done maybe six or seven collection updates throughout the life of my channel. And each time it's like, I got a new bookshelf. So I put up a whole new display of figures. And in my closet, I have a closet in my collection room. I have ceiling to floor boxes of stuff that I have either not displayed or not opened. I have a whole collection of like 
1999 Kenner Star Wars dolls, the 12 inch dolls with cloth before hot toys. I have the whole collection in a box in my closet. So anytime I get a new bookshelf or display, I go into my closet and find what I can actually put up just because I have so much stuff that you can't even see. Yeah, I definitely understand that. I, I got that same thing. I got that same whole closet floor to floor. And I got like, I used to have a, I used to collect a lot of clothes and watches and like, now it's just like, here's my little clothes and here's everything else. Like, look at it. And then once I decide like, who's the, everyone's like, who's the chosen one? Like, uh, 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 same thing. Like, yeah, it usually starts with one figure and then I'm like, oh, if I got this guy, I got to get his enemy. And then if I get his enemy, I got to get this guy. And then it just makes a whole collection. Man. And, uh, what made you decide to like officially start like your toy room? Like you were like, all right, sweetheart, we're going to get a toy room in this yeah, so we, we got it. We bought the house in like 2015, and at the time it was just me and my wife. And I had all this crap that I was basically unloading into one specific room. And it kind of turned into me hijacking the room from my wife. Um, I just started putting everything up and made it real nice. And, and she was like, Well, I'd hate to have you move it. And once we had a kid, I just was like, hey, this is going to be my room. He can have his room. We ah. have our bedroom. So it just was like me taking over, man. Yeah, and it, it's literally like a room that you'd go to to just whatever stress you had all day, boom, sanctuary right here. Everything. Yep. I, I literally can see just being around everything, all four corners just around everything. just phew, looks so neat. Now, uh, you said your collection tours. You did about four of them already. Ah. <sighs> The process for setting up a collection tour video, stressful for you, not stressful for you, easy, breezy, <sighs> let me know the insights. For me, it's... It... it depends. So for me, I keep the room a little bit dirty. I mean, if you look around, there's just lights and things everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's about setting every angle up so you don't see any of that stuff. So it looks like the room is clean and all set up. But because I do reviews and I do collection tours and stuff, I have boxes and loose action figures just everywhere. So it's about setting up everything so it looks clean and people can actually see the toys. So it's a little bit more stressful than some folks that just keep their room clean all the time. Yeah, I, and I don't think those uh, some folks out there actually have YouTube channels. Because if you have a YouTube channel, people just want to see collection reviews, it's the collection toys, and... It is the most stressful thing. I don't think I've done one in like two years. Like I did just one on Marvel Funko Pops. It took me like an hour and a half just to get this. Here's my Marvel Funk. Like this is what I got. Like it's very stressful and it's never complete. Literally, it's never complete. I like what you got with that fish tank. Was that a fish tank you got there with all those uh, Marvel figures? Um, it was actually a uh, a display from the University of Texas. So I'm in Austin. And they do like surplus sales. I got that thing for five bucks. Five bucks. That's five bucks. Big old glass display. That's pretty cool. Uh, so you're mainly a what would you consider yourself as a collector wise? Scale first, and then we'll talk about series. One twelfth scale mostly. Now I love Hot Toys and 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 one six scale stuff, but most of the stuff I have is one twelfth scale, like Marvel Legends and Mezco. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty much all Marvel and Ninja Turtles. I don't collect any DC, not much Dragon Ball or anything like that. Okay, okay. Um, and now, if it had to come down to it, Marvel or Teenage Mutant Turtles? Marvel, man. X-Men is my number one all uh, time. Just when I was a kid, that cartoon show, man, it got me. Yeah. For me, for whatever reason, I never got to watch any of those cartoon shows as a kid. So they got them on Disney Plus now. Yep. I started loading them up. I said, all right, all right. So out of your Naked Turtles, are you missing any of them? No, I have every single one that's come out except the new versions of the Turtles. So out of the new wave, the the Foot Soldiers and the Rocksteady and Bebop, and then they had the Turtles that were neon. Yeah, yeah. I don't have all of those. If you look at the very top up there, I have two of them. Mm -hmm. I'm missing one set. I believe it's Raph and Mikey. So that's the only ones I don't have out of the NECA stuff. Okay, you got the black and white ones? Oh, from way back in the day. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't have the black and white ones. I have the, let's see, the very top. I have the old school ones. Okay. The comic book. 
but I don't have the black and white ones. That's a set. Man, those are still like four or five hundred bucks. I don't know how I did this. Um, when the first Target exclusives came out, I bought a setup and I picked up a setup for my brother. Got home. Somebody said, "Hey, looking for the new Target set. I'll trade you the New York Comic Con black and white turtles. I think it was New York Comic Con ones, the black and white turtles." I said, "All right, this is too good to be true." I said, "This is my name." Who I am, got a YouTube channel. You send me yours first, I will send you these afterwards. They came in the mail. I sent that thing right out. Whoop! I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And uh, I got the whole set now. I got the whole set. I think I want to buy um, some, the the knockoff versions with the, the bandanas painted up. I think I was, yep. I might grab those up. So. That's actually what those are up, up at the top uh, because the other ones I have still in the actual tubes they came in. I haven't opened those. The ones from NECA. The, the tubes are actually the knockoff ones. I don't know if you know that one. Oh, it is? Yeah, so these are the knockoff ones. Um, the ones that are official are the ones that have that, uh, that, that square. Um, oh, the old school card back. Yeah. Like, like April figure. Yeah, like the April one. And you got literally, you have to cut that thing out. Like, like, it's ridiculous. And they go for a pretty price, like a couple, uh, couple hundred dollars, like, well, like a hundred something dollars for like one of them, if you could find them. Uh, they're nice. I own the, the, the April uh, with the Mousers, and I have the Mouser San Diego Comic Con ones I bought. You know, I picked them up uh, before that. I don't know what they are now, but I thought before they're pretty hype. So, uh, any other turtle yeah, stuff? Yeah, I have a set of the bootlegs with the colored bandanas. Yeah, yeah. The legit ones were the red bandanas, so I have those in the closet in the tubes. But if the tubes are all knockoffs, yeah, the knockoffs. Right, those are knockoffs as well, then. Yeah, they all. Those are all knockoffs. Uh, you could buy those off uh, China. Um, the way you could tell uh, is if you take it out of a thing, their plastic is actually soft. It's like a soft kind of plastic, like uh, the Red Hulk would kind of feel like, or the thing would be like a soft plastic. The um, knockoff ones, they have really hard plastic. They're identical. They're the greatest knockoffs in the history. So if you can't buy those, buy them. And if you buy the official ones, you definitely don't take those out of package. It's just, yeah, you have to cut yourself out of it. One of my buddies who collected them, uh, he said it was the most, you know, he, I think he took the April out. He was so disappointed afterwards because, you know, you have to cut them out. And it's like, oh, what was I thinking? Ah, that was a big sacrifice. So, we're going to get into our uh, toy news. we got more to talk about you uh, throughout the entire series of this uh, Toy Wars thing, which we're probably going to do weekly uh, for sure because everything keeps coming out literally by weekly. So let me throw this camera back on. Uh, you're collecting 1-6 stuff as well, right? Yeah, I have some hot toys. Anything they put out, Spider-Man, I have to get. Uh, Spider-Man is like, like my second favorite behind Wolverine. I love all the new video game suits. Uh, you can I have like the negative suit. Spider Punk, Scarlet Spider, uh, even Iron Spider and the stuff from the MCU. I love anything they do, Spider Man. I'm with you on that. I gotta unbox some of these. You got the uh you got you got them all, right? Basically. I got them all except for the advanced suit from the video game because I like the MCU suit better, so I went one red and blue suit and I just went with the Marvel Cinematic. Gotcha. Universe. Gotcha. Kinda of was a little disappointed that they kind of reissued that, but uh, uh. Yeah, people were not happy. Same with those Iron Man. You get the Iron Mans, they re redo those, man. People get so pissed off. Yeah, they better not be doing some of these ones that I just bought. I bought an Iron Man Mark V recently. <laughs> but Yeah, that Mark, uh, what's that, the Mark 47 or 47? The one from uh, Far uh, yeah, far From Home? Yeah. Oh, homecoming. Homecoming. People were pissed when they released that one. Yeah, that was... Uh... <laughs> And I hate the one thing I don't like about it, you know, a lot of people go out there, oh, screw the scalpers, screw the scalpers, all this stuff. But really, screw the people who bought those recently. You know, if you bought those within the past six months, those guys should be, you know, sh shitted on, you can say. And they're the, but they're the guys who are the hardcore collectors. Those are the guys who went out of their way to spend that kind of money on a yep. figure. And if you're doing that, you are as hardcore as it gets, man. I can't say, you know, you just spent 1200 bucks on a figure. Screw those guys. Those are the guys who are bringing it to life, you know. So yeah, I mean, scalper, that's a tough that's a tough topic. You bring up scalpers. 
people are very, very divided on scalpers. So for me, it comes down to supply and demand. Uh, if a toy is worth more in the secondary market, more power to you. My feeling is you just got to start hunting, to, you know, get out there and go to every time they're stocking at Walmart, like around here. I know they stock between 8 and 9 p.m. So if I go to Target or Walmart, I'm trying to find that new wave or that new figure like that Red Hulk. You got to be there when they're stocking. You got to get it right when it comes out. Right. And uh, one of my biggest, uh, I would say, bug about this. I just recently got to Marvel Legends, Black Series, and, you know, I've always been in the Funko Pops is... I don't mind if you're reselling or if you want to call it flipping or whatever you want to call it, if you gain in a few extra bucks. And I'm talking about you making $50, maybe $30. But, you know, people are buying up the Red Hulks or these Black Series figures for a five-hour profit after, you know, you're selling on eBay. I, you know, I picked up four, I saw four Red Hulks in the store. What are they going for? $50? I go, oh, $50. It costs thirty dollars, ten dollars to ship, plus feeds. That's a yep. plus box and all that. It's a five dollar profit. I said I'm taking one, which I gave away to my buddy. Shout out to Garwood, and then the other one, the other two. I said I don't want that. For the next guy. For I don't need that. Girl. I put it. I said, hey, it's on this shelf in this aisle. If you have my one of my followers on there, there you go. That's it. Like that was just. And that's what I don't like about these guys. You know, they're selling for five dollar profit. Same thing for the turtle people. You know, it costs fifty bucks. They're selling it for sixty five. Like it costs ten dollars a ship. Leave it there. Yeah. Just leave it there. Those turtles are crazy, man. People. So Rocksteady and Bebop are are pretty available now. You can grab them. But two months ago, when they first came out, people were putting them online for like one hundred and twenty dollars <laughs> for a pack of figures that cost fifty bucks. And if the the only problem is if you don't get it in that first wave. You gotta wait all the way till now, and that was going around like November, December. Um, I literally posted a video, seventeen targets. I went to seventeen targets, and I posted a video, seventeen target Funko Pop, uh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Hunt. It was, uh, it was did insane. You get, did you get this when it got re-released? Um, I just sold those in the store recently. I left them. I left them there. Um, the box was a little damaged. I already have the first wave of them, um, and I really don't want them in box because. I own basically the Comic Con versions of majority of or everything. You always get those exclusive sets. Um, not always, but I I try to get them. Like the black and white ones. I have the ones from last one. I got the foot soldiers. I got the arcade ones. Um, before they talked about reissuing all them, I just bought them off like Facebook Marketplace for me. Like some guy in Facebook Marketplace had a bunch of them. I was like, all right, I'll take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. So uh, that kind of worked out for me uh, in that sense. And then I like to keep those in the box. Um, I gotta, I'm got i waiting for the uh, arcade ones to come out so I can put my new arc, my older arcade ones back into those box. So Do you have the arcade set that came out with the Foot Soldiers and Shredder and then the Ninja Turtles? I only unboxed the uh, Foot Soldier ones, but I seen another spot right by me selling it for like 70 bucks, the Foot Soldiers, and I'm like, yeah, I might pick these guys up so I can just uh, take them out of the box so I can have two sets because I'm... Uh... Those are some of my favorite sets. And so before, I try to keep the Comic-Con sets uh, in the box now. So as you can see, the, the San Diego one with Shredder and Splinter is yep. there. And then they release them at GameStop, so I get those and take them out. Yeah, that's the plan. Before they were doing that, though, I, I bought the 8-bit one from the video game and that one that came uh, the first year it was the movie figures, I think 2018. Mm -hmm. They came in, like, the VHS style. Yeah, box. yeah. I didn't know they were going to re-release those in GameStop. I fucking opened my box, man. I'm so bummed Ooh. Out. You put them back or you just kept them out? No, I got them out still. I, once I took them out, they were out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I bought the GameStop ones and figured, hey, man, I could just keep these in the box now. But I was so pissed because they made that Comic-Con set seem like they were never going to make them again. Yep. They said, we will never do this set again. And they just did them individually. <laughs> Not only did it individually, they went, so uh, put them in GameStop, restocked them at GameStop, and then they got another wave coming of the same ones, man. It's unbelievable. I, I posted a video on why not to like top five reasons why not to collect this. And number one reason is it's literally repaints after repaints yep. after repaints after repaints. It's driving me black and crazy. So we're going to get on our first news. Um, and it's going to talk about Teen Mutant Turtles because that's what we do best uh, right now. And that's what the hype is. Um, <sighs> Man. 
I, I NECA teamed up with or oh, NECA did NECA buy Loot Crate because I think I heard I think they're the majority shareholder now. Yeah, they bought Loot Crate, and then they came out with a 30th year anniversary. If you backed it, they were going to launch a Splinter figure. They called it the 30th year anniversary box. There it is. And with that, that's not the other one. You got it up there. And show them up. Boom. And with that, for 50 bucks, you got it. So NECA comes out and decides that, hey, we're going to do three three boxes now. We're going to do three boxes. I never unboxed one yet. Uh, we're going to do three boxes plus a bonus box, which includes the 30th year anniversary figure, which peop they have stated that they would never, ever sell, ever. I guess they had some, maybe some extra stock. And they put it up. Just this week, three boxes plus a bonus figure, 250 bucks. I picked up just the three figures, uh, three boxes. You picked up the three boxes and the figure, right? Yep, I got the three boxes and the, the 30th anniversary just because I don't want to miss anything. I feel like they're probably going to throw something extra in. <laughs> I sure hope so. Now, this was an interesting box because if you bought the three boxes, it was 150 bucks. Uh, plus tax came up to like 170 But if you bought the three boxes plus the Splinter 30th anniversary, it was, they were charging $100 now. They were yeah. flipping it. They literally flipped their own boxes. I, and I can't fault them, and I can't say it was good, but it, it gave actually some good backing for the people who actually pre-ordered and backed the actual company. Yeah, I uh, I felt a little funny about it but i'm one of the people that is a supporter of NECA and this ninja turtles line and i want to have all of them so if i have an extra splinter just means i get to take one out of the package and display it um but i was like you man i really thought hard about just getting the three boxes or do i actually get that 30th anniversary box as well yeah i wanted to so because that happened i'm like all right so this splinter sounds like 150 at the time let me go throw this bad boy up. I actually had the listing up. I threw it up on eBay. And then I saw I went to go purchase. I'm like, wait, they sell this for 150 I mean, 100 now, not 50 I said, God dang it. I backed out of it because, you know, if I sold it, I would have made 100 bucks profit. And then you put that 100 towards the 75 So for $75, you were able to get literally all three boxes. So canceled all that. Just bought the three boxes. So there's supposed to be three of them. Starting first with their crate one that has the uh, the shredder. Uh, the repaint is from the arcade line, correct? Yeah, so it's from the arcade line with the alternate paint application. So the first arcade line was from the video game. And that second one was from the comic book. Oh, the I vintage. The sets. vintage one. That's right. I never unboxed that one. That's the only one I don't have. I don't have that set with the uh the vintage painting mm -hmm. but i think the the repaint is from like tmnt issue number nine or ten because they killed shredder in the first ep the first issue actually killed him and so they brought him back like 10 issues later when the, the series got more popular so i think this dark blue one here is from issue nine or ten when they actually brought him back yeah and if you can see in the photo they have that uh that comic book style like the mafex um spider-man here they have like if you could see it, it has like that black, like comic book, like ink on it, which looks pretty cool. Work. You can see like the line work in there. Right. It looks, I, I like the way it looks. It looks very cool. Um, that's their first box. Supposed to be shipping out in June, I believe. And then their second box is the arcade style one. So I, I don't really know what to expect here because we have the arcade style ones. They have the Turtles in Time stuff going out. Maybe it could be that April. What do you think? Yeah, they said it wasn't anything we saw at Toy Fair, so I don't really know what it might be because they showed so much stuff at Toy Fair. I figured it had to be one of those figures, but Randy confirmed on Facebook that it's not. Yeah, and uh, when you look at the photo, when it scrolls through, there is an April in the background of it. Yep. Some foot soldiers. I, I'm i down for those. I do not want more turtles from the arcade line, especially with those Turtle in Time ones, which look great. Um, and we definitely could definitely use. Did we ever get a silver foot soldier? It might be that silver foot soldier. From the arcade line? 
Um, yeah. they, they have a silver one. I like the arcade ones. They come with those huge little uh, bunkers things. <laughs> like they... Yeah, they have the, the mallet. They got the crazy weapons. Oh, and then uh, their third one was, they didn't say what it was going to be, right? They didn't say what the third crate's going to be? And this is supposed to go all the way on till December, I'm I'm sure. Um, Basically through the end of the year, right? Yeah, so for the whole year. Um, their bonus exclusive figure, if you bought all three crates, was a bunny suit, Bebop. And, hey, I'll take it. I don't care if it's the same scope, whatever. But I think that's a great, different, different character, different figure in your collection. Yeah, and I just have a feeling... Again, I don't know at this point, but I have a feeling that's going to be like by itself, probably a two or three hundred dollar figure because nobody's going to they're going to miss out on it. And then they're going to want it for the collection. People are going to start posting about it. And that thing's going to be hard to get. Yeah. People are going to probably just sell that just to be able to pay for their whole three months that they just got. Like, boom, here's my whole three months. You can just sell that one figure. Um, and if Loot Crate is now primary, to, I mean, NECA is now the primary holder of the NECA, uh, of this uh, Loot Crate line, it's going to be something special because if you look at any Loot Crate product, it's oversaturated and they're basically worth $5, like the Funko Pops. Yeah, they were trinkets, man. I used to get them and I, I never really cared for them. Yeah, so if they keep it, like they said, limited edition, exclusive, you're not going to be able to go to FYE find this. That's my hope. Um. My hype for it is here. My disappointment is right at the same part because I know somehow in some way I'm going to become disappointed in this. Ah, I feel like something's going to happen. I'm like, damn, man, sucks. One of those boxes is going to be trash. Well, even the the stuff that came in, if you unbox your the, the one with the spirit splinter, the stuff in the box is kind of hokey, man. It's like a patch, a pin. And a bandana and a t-shirt. They love throwing so a t-shirt because they didn't buy that. You know, you were just buying that exclusive figure. Yeah, yeah. They try to throw all those little things. They're like, oh, here's the other twenty-five dollars in value, like in the shirt. Oh, that's a twenty-dollar shirt. You, we, we got you. You know, uh, like you would have bought it. Um, the one great thing about this was they did reveal that there would be a splinter if you purchased it within twelve hours. It did sell out, uh, so you would not be able to get any of the. Uh, 30 year anniversary splinter added on if you didn't buy it within the 12 hours of when they launched it, which was great because that showed how much stock they actually had for that. So, um, and it means it was actually limited. I hate when people do limited edition and then there's nothing limited about it. There's 50,000 of them. Right, yeah. Here's a limited edition Funko Pop that you can find at every store, and then you can find it all at FYEs and across all the, the pop culture. You can find it in, in Australia websites, which is uh, which is ridiculous. So uh, that was our... Are you a big Chase guy? When you go for Funkos, is, a, is it a big thing for you to get the Chase edition? Um, it depends what it is. You know, 2018, 17, 16, whoo, you needed those Chases. Like, that was life. Like, And that's what the hunt's all about with, with those... Um, let's, um, let's see if we can move over to some Mezco talk. Uh, there was some drops, uh, or one particular figure that actually was released to the public, which kind of worked out because I didn't think we were going to get anything with the, um, we'll call it, I, we'll call it the virus, we'll call it the virus. Cause I heard you can't say a little bit of, you can't see the C with the virus because then yeah, they, they, can't they, say uh, it. Demonetize the and they'll just be like, nah, this, ain't, this mother flock ain't playing around here. Um, but it was the Hal Jordan, right? Mezco, DC. You don't collect DC, you said. No. No, but I have. I actually have a guy who hooks me up with Mezco stuff. Uh, even if I don't buy it a lot of times, he'll send me one. So I'll probably end up reviewing this figure. But I'm... I'm just not either John Stewart or Hal Jordan. I'm not a big fan of Green Lantern, man. What about you? So the way I got myself into collecting Mezcos, you know, I had to sacrifice my life. I had to go and do some research. And I found out the Mezco game that they have a license for something that other companies don't have and make great quality figures is the comic book version. So the Marvel comic books and the DC comic books Nobody has a good license for it. No one make, keeps up with it. Nobody has what I was looking for in quality. And Mezco found that in my life. So I collect all the 
Mezco's DC Comics, Mezco, uh, Marvel as well. And I'm glad to have that in my collection where my Marvel MCU stuff, it's all in Hot Toys. And my DC stuff is all for DC is all into uh, Dark Knight stuff. But that's it. Like, I only do Dark Knight. Maybe I'll throw a Joker in there. Uh, but just that. So, I'm going to get this. This is a PX exclusive. I think it was retail around 85 bucks ish or so. So Yeah, 85 or 90 um, These, you know, anything that they do with these mixed media suits with, like, the spandex, but also some of that latex material, I think they do the best job, even with Hot Toys, because sometimes Hot Toys suits you know they, they mess up over time if mm -hmm. you put them in real crazy poses i don't have that issue with my mezco figures yeah i got the punisher that's like that whoo whoo my lord i love it i absolutely love it. probably my it's number one favorite favorite figure i love it so much i just keep adding more accessories i'm like where can i find more accessories where can i find diorama where can i keep adding these things uh compared to the soft cloth that goes with the uh wolverine from san diego comic-con the striped suit i'm like yo He's my favorite delicate figure in my collection. For I'm like, here he is, folks. <laughs> Let me get my great. Okay, put him back on. Put him in a pose. No, I put him back on a shelf. Just stay there, sir. He's a. Uh, Do you keep anything behind glass, or are you uh, you're not too worried about dust? Um, I'm not. I don't have. I live in Central Air apartment up here, so um, the only dust I ever get is on top of the detolf. That is okay. at it. And then in the bedroom, I have another thing just like this, like uh, an Ikea, like 8x8 eight eight box cubes. That gets dust, but dust, the only two areas that we ever get dust. Like the figures up here, they never get any dust. The figures behind or the boxes behind the TV do, for whatever reason, don't do get dust as well. So how about you? Yeah, I am constantly fighting dust. I'm in a, uh, a part of – I'm in Austin. I'm in a part of Austin where we do get a little bit of dust and stuff coming up in the air. So I have three detobs in my room. Everything else is out if it's not in the glass case. So I, once a month, twice a month, I go through and try to dust at least the shelves because for me it looks really tacky when you have a nice display of figures, but I can swipe my finger and check out the dust on the display base. And uh, what about the carded figures? They get dust or no? Yeah, they get dust, but you can't really tell because it's on the top of the bubble. So, like, on these figures uh, right I see. here, yep. there'll be some dust. Gotcha. But other than that, you can't really see it too bad. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, – I'm lucky not to have it. Uh, you ever think about putting, like, an air purifier in there and just leaving it on? Nah. No, you know, that's something that I should look into. But for me, like, I don't buy this stuff to sell it. You know, this is all for me. Right, I, right. I love this stuff more than anybody that could buy it from me. So – if I end up selling it one day, you're just going to have to buy it as is, but I don't plan on selling any of this crap. I, I, I said that until I ran out of space and I wanted to collect more crap. So <laughs> <laughs> so I sell stuff to buy stuff, sell stuff to buy stuff. Um, so this was really the only release that I knew of, of for the Green Lantern. Do you pre-order your Mezco stuff? Most of the time, yes. So if it's an exclusive, obviously you got to yeah. get on and get it right when it drops or else you miss out on those. Um, everything else, I'm going to do a little plug. Everything else I get from my boy, ToyDepotStore.com. He gives me, either lets me review them for free or sends them to me at a discount. So most of my Mezco stuff I get from my homies at ToyDepotStore.com. Shout out to them. Uh, maybe they can hook you up with a discount code to use for your viewers to use in the, in the, the streams and stuff like that or on your channel. Uh, that would be a little great for them, great for you. So shout out to those guys. It's always nice to have that plug. For me, I get my Mezcos if they're not exclusive, and I probably only own one exclusive. Uh, and it's actually I don't I don't think I've ever actually got an exclusive off the website. Oh, actually, the Gold Gomez is I got. Okay, you got the Gomez. You the got Gomez. Gomez right? And then I pre-ordered um, the Wonder Woman exclusive, but I got it from Big Bad Toy Store. So okay. that was something like I was like, all right, I got an exclusive. I never unboxed it yet, but I got it. I got it. But uh. I got to say, before we get into Gomez stuff, you, uh, or uh, before we leave the Mezco stuff, you have every single Gomez, don't you? Besides the Shadow Assassins that were Asia exclusives, I have every version that has come out, even the five points, blue and the black version. Man, if you guys don't collect Mezcos, the Gomez figure is 
their most uh, valued line right now. And those figures are off the charts. You can't even find them for sale. I've seen people asking, hey, I got a, say, a Sashin Gomez or um, any of the Gomez figures. I'll trade this for the Wolverine <sighs> San Diego Comic Con exclusive. And people are in the chat, PM me. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. You can't, you're giving up this for that? Oh, I can't do it. But that just I've shows you. I've seen people trading for Hot Toys. Have you seen that? I see people doing that too. It's crazy because they're pricing them at 250 up. Some of them 500. Yeah. If you could find some of these for 250, that is a a, uh, a gift because I've seen people like, hey, I'll give you go, uh, the gold Gomez, which costs basically 230 plus cash for one of your Gomez's as a trade. I'm like, wow. Oh, this is this is this is it's getting crazy. The Gomez they do with those those really nice boxes. So two of them have come with lunch boxes. I, I and love those. They're like metal, nice quality, old school lunch boxes. When you do stuff like that for collectors, it just makes it it's an easy buy because you know you're getting so much more than just a toy. Yeah, um, it sucks because I go to all the cons and I never get into the Mezco booth. Like early, and Mezco is by far one of the worst companies that has ever came to any Comic Con. Because if you have a, say, if you go to San Diego Comic Con, say you got a ticket to go to their booth on Friday or Saturday, the the, the official start of the con, there's opening night, preview night on Wednesday, which is only like an hour or two, a couple hours, and then there's the opening day, Thursday. If you got a ticket for the booth, and you're pumped and ready to go. You go there Friday, they ain't there. They're all sold out. They don't put no limit on it. It's just that's the way it is. That's how they do it. They just Damn. chill out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You go to their booth. You can buy some commons, and that's it. They had some moon nights left over last year, but same thing for uh, New York Comic Con. By the time uh, Friday came, they all sold out. The con starts on Thursday. What do you mean? It's all sold out already? Lines going around the whole place. It is crazy. crazy. I hate that they do it like that. But like, just say that. Like, you signed up for the booth, and you can only pick one. Uh, basically, you get a pick, a very few amount. You get numbers for San Diego Comic Con. How many you can just uh, pick which ones you want, and they usually only let you win like one of them if you do win any of them, and you win the Mezco booth, and you're so pumped and excited, and you win it Friday two o'clock or twelve o'clock. It's all gone. You sold. They got nothing left. Nothing. I didn't know it was a raffle on that. I knew it was a raffle to get in. I didn't know it was a raffle on the actual booth you get to go to. Raffle on a booth. Yo, you don't even know the game, yo. These Mezcos, like this lunchbox, even though I went to New York Comic Con, I had to buy that for secondary market. Damn. The Mezco for the Jim Gordon, I had to have oh, a guy show up to my house, 185. Here you go. Like he yeah, that's, uh, tough one to get. that's still hard to get because of that bat signal. I'm at the con and I got to pay flipper price on it. Like, oh, it's the worst. It's absolutely the worst because, you know, I go to the cons. I go to all of them and it seems as if they either I have to buy it secondary market or they go and reissue it as a shared exclusive somewhere like the NECA figures we were talking about earlier. Like, I'm like, no, what are you doing? I just bought this 150 bucks and now you're selling it for, you know, $25 each. And for me to get the NECA line, they did not have a lottery system. So I had to give 40 bucks, 20 bucks to each dude to get into the line. Like I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. While the females were like, no, fuck yeah. I was like, yo, screw you, yo. That. you that's funny you said that. I did that one time in 2013, the first time I ever met Stan Lee. He was leaving from a Comic-Con I was at in Austin, Texas. I wasn't going to make it. I slipped the guy a 20. He let me get in front of him, and we got to meet Stan Lee. That's the way so to do it. Now you got to do it, man. If not, that line going like this, you're sitting there for three hours. People go to the con that day, preview night, just to be able to buy just one thing. And All it's, they do is boom. sit in the line. Sitting in one line for one figure. If you want to get the Funko booth and you don't got the lottery system, you out. If you go into Lego, you out. Um, Mezco, you out. Um, NECA, you can wait on line, but once they sell out, you're done. You don't want to wait on that line. Um, even Figpin, I got a lottery. All these people got lotteries. You can't get in without a lottery. They had to run a lottery system because people would sit in line all day long. And it's not enjoyable. At least you know you ain't getting it, and that's it. 
Um, but you know, you see some people online, boom, boom, you can throw them some cash. Uh, the Bandai booth isn't too bad though. You can win a lottery system, get to the Bandai booth, but by Friday night, Saturday night, there's nobody, uh, they're, they're basically, there's nobody online anymore and you can go buy those exclusives. For me, it's the SH figure arts. Uh, they got some statues with their Dragon Ball Z stuff. You're not too much into those. You went with the little bit higher end stuff, right? Yeah, most of the time, like, I will say, so I go to all the cons in Texas. I'm from Texas. I go to Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Austin, and Tamashi Nations is always there. So they do have a good selection of all their SH figure arts, all that import stuff. So if I can find stuff at a con at a good price, I will grab some of that stuff. Like, I have a few things from, like, the Dragon Ball Z, some of their Godzilla figures, the FH monster arts. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have a whole lot of that stuff. Yeah, um, I go every time. I'm trying to get them. Um, so they have this thing called a world tour that they do every single year. And people go crazy for it. They're like, oh my God, it's here. I don't want to miss out on it. They don't realize, though, that they use actually the same damn figures throughout the entire tour. Like, they'll go from Japan to San Diego Comic-Con to the world tour down in, uh, I think they actually have one like in Texas or Mexico. They have one at New York Comic Con. It's the same exact figures and people think they're not going to get them or they're going to be limited, but they're literally only sold to con and uh, people are going online going crazy for them. So when they came to New York Comic Con, which I consider New York Comic Con as like, you know, it's the leftovers, the leftover con, they bring those figures there. So when New York Comic Con came, I'm like, ah, good. I'm going to wait on that line. I'm, I'm pretty stoked for that. Um, you when you be an East Coast guy, do you prefer New York or San Diego? San Diego Comic, the greatest Comic Con you ever go to. Once you go to one, you never want to miss again. Until you have like, you'll probably get like one bad year in. Like me last year, I was like, oh, this sucks, yo. I didn't get any boots, and I had to hustle the whole time. The videos weren't the greatest. But San Diego Comic Con, it's the environment. Everybody comes to San Diego. The whole city basically shut down for the con. New York Comic Con, you walk in, you don't know, you know. You gotta go. I gotta drive the train there. You gotta hold your stuff. You go walk in past some bums. There's like one diner. It's it's a pain in the ass. It's not enjoyable. It's not like the whole city shut down just for the Comic Con, like in San Diego. So let's let's use that as a segue, man. The city shutting down for Comic Con. Do you think they will do Comic Con this year? Man, if they don't do Comic Con, the public's gonna cry. You know, just to get into it, like you said before, you have to win a lottery. You have to win a raffle. You got to sign up, and you have to do this like this is like a multiple year thing. Uh, the buddy who I got my stuff from, um, his name's Alex. Uh, I tried to sign up, I couldn't get in. Him and like fourteen other people go together on on the computer, and they put it all in, and then whoever wins, they part them all out because nobody always wins. He didn't win his, but. They all came together. They got me a ticket for it. I was like, thank God. Uh, I'm, I'm registered. I got my own badge and all that stuff. It is crazy, yo. That's how pumped it is. People, especially us collectors, uh, at least me, I get to fight and stuff. I get to get some kind of like, yes, I get some of my, like, you know, uh, this crazy power unreleased. And for everybody else who has to go to San Diego Comic Con expecting, they don't get to do that. And I can see a lot of very pissed off uh, collectors out there. Yeah, man, I've never been. I was I was planning on going this year. I don't think I'll be able to make it out, but I would like to eventually be able to make it. I heard once you win a raffle and you get tickets, you get tickets pretty much every year. Is that the case? Uh, not the case exactly, but you are now a registered member for them. So you get the first dibs on getting those tickets, and then if you don't get it that day, you can try another day. Um, okay. If you are planning on going to San Diego Comic-Con and you want to get tickets, officially get them, you actually have to buy them in October. Right after New York Comic-Con, they go on sale in October for the next year. So if you were trying to get tickets for San Diego Comic-Con this year, you're looking at for two tickets, preview night, hopefully you can get them for 1000 bucks with preview night. Yeah, so that's something you have to put in consideration. And if you're watching this or you're, you're listening to it, you have to remember that. It's a 1000 uh, it's a thousand bucks, or you have to go in October to register. October. What is the retail price of a ticket? It's like I think it's like three sixty-five, three seventy-five. So it's not cheap either. So you're paying flipper price on it at at a thousand. Or if you really want to be crazy patient, you buy a ticket, you get your hotel and everything, and you wait till the week of, leading to the days of. 
to buy it and you could maybe get it for like 500 or so maybe even 400 for the whole four days but you cut it you you ballsy on that one you like yo i'm ready to go here and i'm about to go meet up some guy in san diego to go pick up my ticket for the con like well then you gotta buy stuff man so the thing is you get a 500 dollars, 600 hundred dollar ticket even a thousand up you still gotta buy all your toys man <sighs> They have no idea. So um, every single Comic Con, I have to post on uh, Instagram um, the for Emerald City Comic Con. No, I am not going to San Diego Con, uh, Emerald City Comic Con. And if I was, I wasn't. I'm not picking you up a damn thing <laughs> because of that. You just heard, right? You got to pay for your flight. You didn't mention that your hotel. You got to eat. Yep. Maybe you want to buy some fresh gear to go out there. Got to get a haircut. You got to get to the whole damn airport. You got to do all that stuff. And then nobody thinks about this. You got to bring all that stuff home. You got to get that stuff back to your house. And if you bought a lot of stuff, you got to be very creative. Uh, for most people that go to the FedEx, I actually buy those totes and um, I fill them all up. So those plastic bins that you get from like uh, Target, I get them from, they have wheels on them. And I fill those up, two of them. I pay 25 bucks uh, to ship them underneath. And that's the way I roll on it. But pff, now you don't want to get damaged. All that stuff goes and takes place. And I'm not going to, I'm not lying. I'm not getting you a damn thing. A da I barely get my girlfriend something. I buy a lounge floor. I'm like, you're lucky you got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's funny, man. Yeah. I hope, I mean, they're already canceling a bunch of stuff. They canceled here in Austin, yep. South by Southwest. That's like our biggest thing of the year. So we'll see. We'll see what falls because of this uh, this virus. Yeah, that, that'll ruin everything. Um, I did, since we talked about a little bit, SH Figure Watch, Jiren uh, showed up, which is uh, the, I believe it's his final power version of him. Um, I haven't watched Super yet. He is part of the Dragon Ball Super Wave. So um, for anybody who's listening or Marvel uh, at my toys, so Dragon Ball is the original series. Then if there would be Dragon Ball Z. And then there's a show called Dragon Ball GT. And then there's Dragon Ball Super. So if you were saying, hey, this character's from Dragon Ball Z, like you would just say, right? This is Jiren. He's he's a Dragon Ball Z guy, right? Now this is Dragon Ball Super. So uh, people get crazy with that. I only know that because people like to get crazy on me about that. So he's actually from Dragon Ball Super. Uh, I haven't got it that far up there. This is something that everybody's been looking for. He's all powered up, juice to the T, screaming face. I know the first original release did not have that, and people were waiting. So they have the regular version now, and now they have this. You're definitely going to need both of them for your collection. Um, when uh, Here's a little heads up for you, Marvel, and for you guys at home. I like to buy two or three. If they got two or three head sculpts, I buy two or three of them because I want to use all those head sculpts. And I feel like this figure actually might not have to do that because it has both of those characters in it. They got a common little uh, regular one, and then they have this one. So it looks juice to the T. Super Broly when it came out a couple I, months ago? Yeah, I get um, So if there is a Broly figure, uh, if it's a common release, the best way to buy them is actually off Amazon or Barnes & Nobles. Barnes & Nobles, you can get them for, uh, they'll they'll send out during the holiday season, whatever whatever holiday is. It's like it's Christmas, Christmas Day. They're like, oh, here's a 25 to... Maybe it's usually 20 to 30% off coupon code for a single item. Uh, the best way to do that is to use that code in store. And then you can add your membership card on there and you can get a extra 10% off. So you're literally looking at 40%, sometimes 35% off one single item. And that's the best way uh, I have seen to use uh, those codes. Um, if you're not, and you don't want to be the first to the market, you know, getting that second run of them, you go on Amazon, you buy them for Amazon Prime, you get them for almost 20 to 25% off all day. And that's the way to do it. What does the SH figure uh, Dragon Ball figure go for? Usually around $60, $60. Uh, some of them go for $85. But if you wait it out, you can get them for, you know, 40 bucks, $42. I know that there's a Bulma figure. It's 42 bucks right now. It retailed at 60 three months ago. I bike to buy at the end of the year. If I compare my collection to your collection and I bought all my figures at this price, basically buy to get one. I have this much and I only spent just a little bit more than you. And I have three of each figure because I waited out and I spent just a little bit more than you. 
Or you could just buy them like that and be like, look at my collection to your collection. And I also bought all this extra stuff to uh, break even to what you spent. So that's the best way to save for these guys. Whew. Now, I got to ask, with these figures, they come with some really cool accessories like the power effects and stuff. Do you use all those and set up like little dioramas or do you <sighs> put them in poses? It's tough because some of them do not come with the effects anymore. They used to come with a lot of effects back in the day. Now they just give you the figures and you can buy the effects separate, which is damn. like, damn you, yo. It's like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. You got to go hunt them around. Uh, the Comic-Con ones, though, most of them do come with the effects, which are great. But like this guy's right here, you see him too. There's no effects with them. They're not like the Storm Collectibles where you get those crazy effects, blood gushing, everything you would ever want, which sells you on the figure. They don't really sell them on that. And it kind of gives an option, I guess, for you. Uh, sort of, because, you know, maybe you can't, you don't want the effect and you can buy the effect later. But usually the effect is specialized for that particular figure and kind of sucks that it's just not there no more. And, uh, okay. Yeah, because like with the Marvel stuff, they usually do one with no effects and just the accessories, and they do like an exclusive bundle where you get the blast effects, the flight stand, and all that crap. Yeah, uh, they all come with stands, which are cool, but they just uh, and they're basic stands. They they're, they're pretty they're, they're decent, you know, not the best, not the worst. Um, as much as I love Mezco, I actually don't have any use for their stands. I just got on the space for them, and I like try to make them like a little bit closer with themselves. Like I like having them. Like, maybe if you're posing them up, trying to do something like that. Those bases, man, those round bases take up so much damn space. Yo, it's this big. It, this, it hangs off my shelf, and then it spreads the figures out. Like, if I was setting it up yep. for maybe... It works for the conventions as the display, you know. Here's my display of just this, 10 figures, but I don't have a fish tank to, to display just 10 figures. I, I need to display a couple hundred figures in there. So, uh, we're going to move on to some Hot Toys... Um, there was a little DC thing going on. They had like a DC Comic Con reveal. <sighs> it, it, if I was a DC collector, I don't know. I don't know where I'd be on this one because there's two figures, and then there's one from the DC Universe uh, for for the Harley Quinn. But they went back to the Darkham Knight video game. I think Arkham Knight video game. Uh, they came out with a Batgirl finally. And then they gave a repaint for the Batman. They have a few other figures for this wave. You can add in Deathstroke. There's the... They actually did a Batman Beyond from this as well. Yeah, they got that. Uh, they, those were revealed at San Diego Comic Con. I don't know if you've ever seen those. Um, they might have them at New York Comic Con too. They got the. And then they, uh, there's a Robin in there as well. Um, two, uh, you can see he's not the biggest. D he said he wasn't. He wasn't the biggest DC guy, so you wouldn't realize that. Like, there's a crazy. Uh, these guys are literally up for pre-order now. The Robin still never got pre-ordered, and I don't think the uh, that Batman either was up. Um, for this wave, they have a Joker right now. They have, um, I think it's Red Hood has two different ones. You can swipe out their heads from like a, a red one and a blue one, or this maybe two different figures. There's now. A, this Batgirl, which is their first ever figure, which looks pretty cool. And then they have a Batman with a repaint. Um, and then we'll talk about the Harley Quinn afterwards. That, if I was a, a collector, that thing does look pretty sick. So, Yeah, I like that bat. That, that's got a cool bat symbol with the gold. Um, I didn't play that game, though. Did you play the game? I'm not familiar with the, the suit from that. I played the game for about 20 minutes. I got a little motion sickness. I put it down. A couple years later, I tried to pick it up. I don't know where the hell it went. It's like 12 bucks on, uh, if, if you go to GameStop, you can buy it off Amazon or like that. But uh, they got a cool accessories. They got cool vehicles in it. Um, I didn't get too far in it. Like I said, I played about like 20 minutes of it before I got a little motion sickness. And it's interesting how they're going to do this game when, to me, DC is about their villains. They, they're totally different than Marvel, right? They're, they're trying to build the characters off the good guys. DC is all about that. Ellens. It's funny you say that. My favorite DC character is the Joker, by far. It's always been the Joker. Absolutely. It, you can't go wrong with him. He literally just wants the world to burn. That's the greatest. <laughs> He's one of my favorite. And uh, in Dragon Ball Z, King Piccolo is my favorite because he wants. He has the same concept. He just wants the world to burn. Um, I, I have the DC collect. Uh, do, um, I have 
DX11, I have the bank robber joker. I have the this stack of money. I paid like $150 for like this huge stack of money that's, you've probably never seen it before. It's literally a stack of money, like uh, one six, six scale. one six scale, six foot, it's six, uh, no, it's 12 inches tall. And then it's just tiers of real money. Like they, they printed up each dollar, each hundred dollar bill in it. Uh, I take it out, Damn. but it's way too much effort. Um, I have the, I put some, bo- uh, a, a, a custom body or on the DX11 because he comes with basically two head scopes, so I wanted to make the best out of it. Um, so the DC Dark Knight stuff, I really want them to make some villains, some villains. They buy some, make some villains. Uh, I know they haven't had any success with their villains in the MCU I think life. A Hot Toys Two Face with like a, a animated series style with like the the really bright colors, the pink face, the bright suit. I think that would be a really good one six scale figure if they went that route. Yeah, that would be a one percent, one percent. Make some scarecrow, make up all these guys that are that are great. Um, I have the two face still on pre order with sideshow, but nothing's coming in, nothing's coming out basically from uh, sideshow unless they have yeah, again, it. Again, that, that virus man is keeping things on on hold for a while. I mean, I think I'm probably the last person in the world to actually get one. Like I, I pre ordered the first time. Like, I think they even have it stocked, but because for whatever reason I had it on the payments, they were just sitting there like, come on, man, come on, please give it to me, please give it to me. Earlier, you mentioned the dedication with the Iron Man figures. Those Joker figures have the same, I mean, if you want one of those Joker figures now, you're paying no less than 500 bucks. Yeah, they are off the charts, especially with, right, with the hype with it, with the last Joker coming out, which is a great film. Did you see it? Yep. I loved it. I said, oh, I take medication every day. This is the greatest thing I could ever see. <laughs> Flock the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it was a unique take. For me, it's hard to really get into a Joker movie without Batman. So I think as as much as they did without even having a real Batman, that was a big accomplishment for DC. Yeah, there was a great origin story on how it all brought up. Uh, I just wish and hope that if they're going to continue, they said they're going to make a second film, that they use this new Batman as this mysterious detective and they just start a fresh new series no justice league stuff yep. just give us a dark detective dirty batman i don't care if he starts killing people let's go start it fresh make it dark cuz that's again uh, i heard the holly quinn film you know they try to make it funny we it's got like deadpool it's basically dc's version of deadpool and it, we have that. We have funny. We've seen Endgame. They try. It's funny. Everything funny. I love funny. I got funny. I like dark. We need some dark stuff. So I hope they do that. Uh, they announced that Harley Quinn as well. Looks great. Looks cool. Comes with all these pom pom stuff. But two sixty seven. The price tag was on that, and I was like, oh baby, uh, that's pretty rough. That's three hundred dollar figure. Yeah. I, so have you seen the movie? Absolutely not. So. The accessories are cool because they're from really, really cool parts of the movie. Like the thing in her hand, you get an egg sandwich. Mm -hmm. The egg sandwich is a big, it's a funny part of the movie. So I thought that was cool. The grenade launcher, one of the best scenes in the movie is she goes in and and hijacks the police station with that grenade launcher. Okay. So I thought it was cool for the accessories, but you could do that figure for like 200, 220. It's not a 275 figure. Yeah, and they're not even giving... they literally have no care that we just got hit with all those taxes. Like the company's like, nah, you gotta spend an extra twenty five bucks. I don't care. Hot Toys like, I do not care that you have to spend an extra twenty five dollars for, for your taxes now. We're not gonna lower our prices. <sighs> ah man, no. it's a three hundred dollar Harley Quinn figure for a hundred dollars more. You get an Iron Man die cast figure that one hundred percent will go up in value. No yep. matter if they get reissued or not, it's going to go back up. And it's almost like, how big of a fan are you? And when it comes to like these DC characters, like these video game ones, I found that in my collecting that, because I bought the, some of the, uh, I bought the Joker, I bought the, um, the Deathstroke. When I had it in my collection, I said, you know what? Do you I really, and do you really need to have a, $250, one six scale version of that in your collection. Are you that hardcore of a fan that you need that? And I was like, 
it's all talking to myself, obviously. I'm like, nah, I don't need that. And that's where I decided to sell those. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start using that same concept to stuff that I do want to click. So I want to get into the Marvel DC, uh, Marvel comics. I want to get into the DC comics. How can I do that and express myself as a collector? Let me do it in a 112 scale. Let me go a little smaller than that. Maybe there's nothing else out there for Funko Pop wise. I like their Nickelodeon line. I'm going to stick to collecting just Nickelodeon, some Looney Tunes, and um, a few others, serial ones, to express my addiction for collecting. And it's just got to be a Funko Pop size, right? So that's what it turned down to. I don't need a you know, 12-inch Harley Quinn. Guess what? I'll get the Mezco version, and it's going to be just, you know, 112 scale, come with a bunch of accessories I can show my myself. I got the Batgirl, too, or the Catwoman for that. Uh, Let me ask, are you, so are you the type of collector that, you know, you say you see these figures, you're not that drawn to them, but you, you may want one or two of them. If you grab the Batman from the Arkham Asylum game, do you feel compelled to then get the Joker, the Batwoman, and everything, or is it just what you want and that's it? If you're getting that Batman, you definitely have to get the get Batgirl. Like, there's no doubt you need to get, look, they literally are going together. You can see basically have the same art. Uh, when I bought the Deathstroke, I then bought the Joker right away. I was like, I got to have the villains. You know, I got to have them together. Right. I got to have them. Even all the Deathstrokes, even a villain or not. But I need to get them together. Uh, and then I said, you know what? I don't need this Deathstroke. And I said, I'm getting this out of here. I want to pick up the yeah. Mezco version, though. The Mezco version, which is up there, 175 now. <sighs> Hard yeah, to find. Get, you get the regular version of the Mezco, or uh, do you like the, the PX? I like the regular version, straight up uh, version. I don't really know anything of that one, but because I guess I had the Hot Toy version too, I really felt that I wanted that one. I really want to get that death stroke. It's like 170 right now. <sighs> Pretty rough. That I want to pick up. Green Arrow, The Flash, Shazam. Those four I'm missing, and those guys. Yeah, watch out on The Flash. There's, there's bootlegs of The Flash and the Reverse Flash, so watch out with those Mezcos. Yo, those things go for like 250 right now. All the ones I just mentioned. It's uh, no one's even selling them. I got an extra Magneto or cable if you need one. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I hate that Magneto. I want to get a, um, I think I want to get the the white one as much as I don't like it. But uh, then I heard the story, I found out the story about the white one. And I think uh, he like turns like from a bad guy to reincarnating himself into a good guy. And It almost looks like, did you read the new House of X, Powers of Ten? Absolutely not. X-Men? Not into, not even like close. Magneto from that, he looks very close to that version. Okay, uh, and they're pretty good sale on them. I know you can find those uh, pff, less than eighty bucks now. You get them down for sixty bucks, sixty-five bucks. Yep. I get all my stuff from the local comic book shops for basically ninety percent of my Mezco needs. Uh, I just picked up the regular cable, come with the two guns. A little disappointed that you know you can't really hold the guns with two hands. Watch my review, man. I, I say the same thing. They made the guns too bulky, and he can't get into any poses with his damn weapon. He, this is how he goes, right? Yeah. That's it. That's all he can do with him. That's the thing you can do. You can't even do this. Because his he gear hold like the, goes like the, this. The big plasma rifle. He can't even hold it with two hands. He it's can't do this. It, I have it like riding up on his elbow here. It's like riding <laughs> outwards, and I'm like... I just unboxed it yesterday. Did uh, like a first look on the live stream, uh, and it was just I was like, "Yo!" And then um, the the pegs, if you get them, bloop! It just I'm like, "Damn it! Hold it! Hold it! It doesn't do it." Do you have both versions of uh, cable? I haven't unboxed the other one yet. Um, like I said, I go to that closet. And I'm like, "Who's the lucky winner tonight, baby?" <laughs> <laughs> the lottery. Go pick one. Uh, your choice. Uh, I thought that looked really good at the end of it, but uh, what's your choice between the two of them? Because I was getting asked that yesterday. So I I think I prefer the previews exclusive just because all of the Mezco X-Men stuff with like the blue and the gold, they look so good together that the one in the big outfit, his bulky suit, it looks good. It's a good figure, but it doesn't fit in with the rest of the line. Mm -hmm. so I actually like the previews exclusive a little better. That was my take on it uh, too as of, if I had to fit in my collection, at least I have the other, you know, DC ones. I did get this uh, third-party cape that I added. Who just fell? Hope it's not. I hope it's Punisher. Uh, so I got this third-party cape I bought off Amazon, and it really stoked them out right there. It pimped it out pretty good. Um, I did like the lighting. The light-up for this was 100 
improvement to that Cyclops. That's yeah, way better than Cyclops. Woo! I looked this thing up. I was like, damn! It looked like Christmas you out here. You see it. You don't have to turn the lights off. Oh, my Lord. It lit up like a Christmas tree, folks. It was... <laughs> It looked really nice. Um, what else I had? I think I think that was really it. What I had planned. Um, did you have anything picking up this week? Uh, you got any? Man, actually, if you were listening, my dog, or my my dog barked like twenty minutes ago. Uh, FedEx just dropped off. I got two Mezco exclusive Far From Home Spider Man. They just got. Oh, you got to pick that up. Those. You're so um, now into your collecting. So you heard me. I talk about the DC. MC uh, Marvel Comics. You, on the other hand, are in a whole different category because you collect the MCU stuff, right? Yeah, I collect a lot of the MCU stuff. Um, they've done Thor Ragnarok. They did Hulk, Thor, and Hela. They did Black Panther and uh, the Doctor Strange is from the comic book. So I have most of the MCU stuff and then a lot of the Hot Toys MCU stuff. Like I have the Toy Fair T'Chaka. I have the Avengers Black Panther, not the original Black Panther, mm-hmm. but the one with the UV suit. Yep. And then I have an Iron Man. I got Stan Lee from Guardians of the Galaxy. That Stan Lee figure is one of my favorites. That Hot Toys from Guardians of the Galaxy. A lot of underrated people are just upset that how lim- uh, how overproduced I guess it was. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite figures. Um, and then actually, if you remember, NECA used to do a one-quarter scale Marvel Cinematic Universe line. So I have Doctor Strange with a cloth cape, Thor with a cloth cape, Spider-Man, and then the the gold Midas version of Iron Man. So when I was looking through your collection video, I was like, what are those? Are those Hot Toys? Nope. That's what they are. They used to make them. And they're actually, they used to be like 100 bucks. You can find them now for like 50 or 75 people that still have them because they're just like dead stock. They didn't move that well. Wow. Yeah, uh, nobody's going to buy the neck. Who's... You ain't buying NECA for Marvel stuff. Like, what are you doing? What are you? Who are you? And then look what they did. I guess they took their chances on it, and then you see how the other market is. Why would you even compete with it? Makes sense that they're just dead stock. Boom. Um, and have you seen the, the Deadpool? They have the quarter scale Deadpool. They have the regular, the X Force version, and then the deluxe version with like fifty different accessories. Is that the one that's like life size? Like it's close to or? Yeah, they did it in quarter scale and half scale. They have a six hundred dollar version that's half. It's like a three foot action figure. Yo, it's I seen it look looks crazy. It literally is yeah, show I've never seen one showcase. In person, man. I would like to see it. There's a NECA Leonardo at my local uh flea market spot. He's like I don't know, up to your shoulder. He's like this tall. They only have one of them. It's like a they made it. NECA, it's NECA makes it. He's yeah. this tall. He's a Leonardo, he has some swords. Um, he's on my, uh, Time Warp Comics has it. I never asked if they had it for sale or not, but, uh, they got a Leonardo there sitting there. It no, it's a, just a straight up statue, basically. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure it's a statue, like a, uh, PVC statue that you can just throw out or whatever. But that's the only NECA figure like, I don't know it, that I don't own from, from them. Yeah, I've never seen, I've never seen something like that. All right, so, um, I liked it. First one, Toy Wars is over. Um, there was nothing really that, that got me besides that Jiren, really. The Teenage Mutant Turtle box we're basically waiting on. Uh, there's nothing coming into the stores right now. So we're... Yeah, with, like we, we mentioned, man, everything's kind of on hold. They're kind of waiting for this uh, this to pass over. But yeah. I know, you know, Tamashi Nations, all the SH Figure Art stuff, uh, Mafex, they, they probably can't send anything over. Yeah, I see a lot of people just going on Amazon, just be like, yo, what am I missing? You know, like, I got yeah. that, where's that you scratch? Where's that itch? But my only disappointment was, I actually had an order with Big Bad Toy Store for the uh, final edition Enter Bay Michael Jordan figure. He recently comes in stock yesterday. I said, no way. I bought one off of uh, this, net, uh, it's called Network, for 400 bucks. this website. Uh, official website came out, official, everything's here. I go call them up and say, hey, I want to cancel it because they already took the money out. They're like, this one particular figure has an NRD and you can't even transfer it. You get nothing back. So it cost me like 109 bucks, just or 119 bucks maybe. I just threw out the window. I was like, damn, I got, I got one at a sale just so I can just throw that money right back away. And oh, that was disappointing. That's the price you pay to get it to get it sooner. Yeah, now I want to go buy another one for four hundred dollars, 
off that damn website again, and now it's cheaper than me spending 160 just so I can have one of them. With all the little shoes. Ooh, yeah, and it's the I think it's the home version. Is there a wave version too that comes with shoes? I saw. It's, it's getting rough out there. Is that the one with the the, the goal post and the actual goal and everything, or is it um, just the figure? Just the uh, just the balls. None of them come with the actual. Uh, the basketball hoop and everything. Uh, if you're trying to find the official basketball hoop for Enter Bay figures, which I highly recommend, hot, better quality and hot toys, box quality all around, better quality, better uh, bodies too. Everything's there. Magnetic hands, shoes, everything's off the joints. But to find the actual basketball net, you ain't gonna find one. You can find a third party one on some websites for like two fifty five, which used to sell. Cause I was talking to them yesterday on Big Bad Toy Store. They said it's we used to have for seventy dollars. I'm like ah. 255 for a basketball hoop. Ah, oh, man. That's a rough. That's, that's a, you're buying a, you can go get a real one from Walmart. Oh, my God. And uh, one thing that Enter Bay did great was when the Kobe Bryant uh, passed away, they reissued theirs right away. They said, Yo, you could buy it for $5,000 off Amazon or off eBay, or you can go reorder it. And I was like, thank God they came in for the key. And that's where I pretty much started getting away with uh, getting off on these uh, basketball ones. Because if you got Kobe, you want to get Shaq. I got Shaq in, and I was like, what are those? So is the Shaq a, is the Shaq a good figure? The sh bigger body, two bodies it comes with. Oh damn! For three something like three fifty, two bodies, two different jerseys. They got his rookie Magic. Then you got him in the Lakers. Two different head damn, sculpts. That's a, good, that's a good deal then. Two figures. I would do that with a hot toy, a hundred dollars more, all day instead of spending that. And then they would find out there's another variant. Of it somehow in there, and it comes with two bodies usually. Um, Didn't they do that with the with the Tony Stark and Iron Man? I think four or five years ago. Didn't they have an Iron Man with the Tony Stark in the box? Or was that I'm Iron not. Man and Pepper Potts? That was the pe probably the Pepper Potts one. You could buy okay, Pepper Potts yeah, and the Iron Man. That thing's pretty. That's probably, but they priced in that five sixty, I believe that was, or four four oh, and change. Man, uh, that's ex that's a lot. I bought the Dennis Rodman. He came with two outfits, one base. The other one, uh, the Shaq came with two bases. Um, this one, you got everything, a second head sculpt as well. And different hair color? Different hair. Uh, oh, actually, this is not Dennis Rodman. This is uh, Scotty Pippen, my four. I can't find okay. a Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman's like 500 bucks, man. It's crazy. But, he's my favorite, man. When he came to the Spurs when I was a little kid, I used to love watching him play for the Spurs. Ah, man, he's badass, man. We just watched a whole documentary on him. Uh, but the Scotty Pippen, so what all you're missing out of it is the body. And, you know, you can't really find a hot toy body that's sold by the company. Guess what? Enterbase sells the bodies for it. So you could go on their website and buy the Pippin body. My luck, it was sold out though, but the guy Tim sent on eBay was selling the body for 100 bucks. So $100 more, I got two figures out of it. And they, nice. and, but the whole thing was the company actually gave you the option to go buy that body if you wanted one. Instead of you charging you, uh, I think it was like 260 that was instead of charging you 360 they just left it in actually it was 50 dollars for the bodies on their website too they're 50 dollars he was flipping them yeah so they were just selling it for 50 dollars instead of adding 50 dollars onto it they just gave you that option which is flocking amazing so whoo let's finish this up uh you got anything else to say uh you want to plug I your channel me on i look forward to making this a more regular thing i think we got a lot of stuff to talk about in the next couple months so yeah absolutely we're gonna try to keep this uh Maybe keep it uh, shooting this on Saturdays or even if we're going to shoot on Sundays, depending on what my schedule is going to be. Um, I am a world-ranked professional boxer. You have a full-time job. You got a family. You got kids, uh, a kid. And uh, we're going to keep it going. Uh, I know a lot of these podcasts, I've seen it over and over again. After, you know, a month or month, two months, they just die out. So uh, every time. So um, if you guys are interested in seeing new reissues, like uh, not new reissues, new releases, that are coming out. Say you wake up the next morning and there's a new whatever's released. We're going to hop on over to his channel, which is Marvel at My Toys. Marvel at My Toys. We're going to leave everything in the description. And then we're going to go talk about those reissue, uh, those releases. 10, 15, maybe 30-minute tops on them. Get them out there for you guys to see. And uh, try to keep playing that game like that. So hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know your thoughts about this. You could... Follow us on Stitcher, Google Podcast. I'm going to throw it on those two. So it's going to be pretty fun. And obviously, you're going to be able to watch these on YouTube. Uh, we are going to go to another format to actually doing live streams in the future. Um, so you guys can interact. But we really want to try to get the first one or two, maybe three down to where we feel comfortable to doing it. So I'm going to leave you out.
<laughs> yeah, anything else? Like, uh, if you guys want to see us talk about something, if there's a release coming up you want us to touch on, leave it in the comments, and we'll try to look through those every week and then add anything else that you guys want to see to the show. Sounds great. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hammer out. Boom. Boom.